Okay, we're there in Proverbs chapter number 9. And if you just turn back a few pages uh, to the left, keep your finger in Proverbs 9, well, you're not turning too far, but either, either um, to uh, Proverbs chapter number 1. Look at Proverbs chapter number 1. Proverbs chapter number 1 and verse number 1. Proverbs 1 1 says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And that's going to tell us what the Proverbs are for. It says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so notice we can see here, we can see some of the purpose of the book of Proverbs. You know, it tells us in, in verse 2, it's to know wisdom, to know instruction, to understand or to, or to perceive things. You know, there's a lot of contrast that we find in the book of Proverbs between people who understand things and people who don't. You know, between people who are wise and people who are foolish. But it's not that everyone is one or the other, you know. Uh, and there's nothing that can be done about it. Like, you're either a fool and that's it, you're just a fool and there's, there's no hope, or, the, or, or you, you're wise and, and that's it, you know, job done. No, it's not really a case of that. It's a case of one of the po- purposes of Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and knowledge. Look at verse number three, it says, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. But notice that it's something which must be willingly received. You see, you can't force someone to become wise. You can't force someone to become wise. You can't force them to get understanding. There's an old saying, it's not actually from the book of Proverbs, an old saying that goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You know? You can you, you can you can take it you can take a horse and you can take it to where there's water to drink. But you know, and you can try and pull its neck down, but it's, that's probably not going to work. You try pulling on the horse's neck down, you know, if it doesn't want to drink, then it's not going to drink. Now here's the thing, you know If the horse could understand human speech, you could probably tell it, hey, guess what? We're about to go on a long journey, and there's nothing to drink on the way. You know? And if it understood that, then, you know, it might think, hey, I'd better get some hydration. I'd better better slurp up some water. But the horse doesn't understand. The horse doesn't understand what you say. Why? Because it lacks understanding, there's a barrier to it getting more understanding. Okay? And so here's the thing. It says in Proverbs chapter number, verse number five, a wise man will hear and will increase learning... And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Okay? Now here's the thing. One of the ways to know whether you're wise or foolish is to consider whether you listen and desire to learn. Whether you listen and desire to learn. Look at verse number 6. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, Proverbs aims to give wisdom and understanding, but fools don't want to learn. Fools don't want to learn. Turn back to Proverbs chapter 9, where we started. The title of the sermon this evening is The Importance of Learning. The Importance of Learning. I remember when I, when I was back at school, you know, a long time ago it was now, but I remember back at school, you know, learning was something that kind of wasn't really cool. It wasn't cool to learn. When I, certainly at the school that I went to, it was uncool if you were interested in learning. You know, in fact, being ignorant was something that was highly regarded. Like, if you were really stupid, it was like, hey, that's a good thing. You know, I, I, I remember there was a friend of mine, a friend of mine, and we were, we were in, I think it was like fifth form English class, and I remember that um, we were reading some story or other, it was just like, I can't remember, what, can't remember what the book was, but it was like, different people in the class had to read. You know, we all had this book, we were reading it, and we were taking turns reading it, and when it came to this guy's turn to read it, now he wasn't the greatest of readers to start with, you know, he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but he wasn't that stupid. But he just acted as though he was really bad. Like he made himself worse than, just to get some laughs. He pretended to be dumb. Because look, hey, that was cool. To act as though you can't even read properly. You know? I remember there was also a, a, there was a kind of a thing that where it was almost like, I don't know, I wasn't at the stage where I wanted to fail at school. But at the same time, you didn't really want to try. You didn't really want to try hard. If you could pass... Without trying, then it's like, oh, well, that just shows, you know, I'm smart enough. I don't need to do any work, but I can still pass. You know, you didn't want to fail, but at the same time, you didn't want to study and work hard, you know? And, but the thing about this, that's kind of, a, kind of a foolish sort of attitude because, you know, knowledge, learning, it comes through 
working. Yeah. It comes through studying. That's the way to actually to improve. You know, in fact, I was actually reading scientists who've studied in the area of achievement. <coughs> They've actually referred to something as having like a, a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. You know, when you think your performance is fixed by the amount of talent that you have or don't have, in other words, you've just got this natural inborn talent or you don't, then you'll actually tend to look for areas where you already do well. You know, you won't, you won't want to go out of your comfort zone because that's going to expose, well, he's not good at this, you know, and he's never going to be good at this. But here's the thing, you know, you, you'll avoid doing things that you aren't good at. But of course, if you avoid doing things you aren't good at, what's that going to prevent? You're getting any better. You're not, you're not going to improve, you know. But if instead of that, if you realise that, look, your achievement is limited only by the amount of work you put in, then that can actually motivate you to actually try harder, to put more work in. You know, because, I mean, one way of thinking of it, it's not every failure is actually a stepping stone to success. Every time you try something and it doesn't work out and you mess up, that's actually a stepping stone to success. But what happens if you avoid the stepping stones? If failures are stepping stones away to success, and you don't want to step on those stepping stones... By not failing, you're avoiding success, which really is failing, if you think about it. You know, it makes it, makes it impossible. You know? I mean, th- I mean, think about something like soul winning. You know, a lot of people, one of the reasons why people don't like, want to go soul winning, they're sort of scared. What will people think? What will they say? What if I go out and I, and I try to preach the gospel to someone? You know? Look, let's say I try to preach the gospel to someone and they don't want to hear. And so I don't get to do it. Well, guess what? What would happen if you didn't go soul winning? Then they wouldn't get to hear either. You know? Or maybe you do get to preach the gospel to someone, but they don't get saved. Well, guess what? What would happen if you don't go soul winning? Well, they're not going to get saved either. You know what I mean? And so when you don't do something because of fear, you're actually, you know, it's bringing the thing about, which, which, you, which you're worried about, you know? Whereas if you try and maybe fail, try. I mean, who, who the first time you preach the gospel to someone, the first time you preach the gospel and they got saved? Put your hand off, that's you. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> but but here's, the, here's the thing. That, that's, a rare, that's a rare situation. That's a rare situation. Because most of the time, it's like, that's not what's going to happen. Most of the time, it's going to be like, you try, and you'll try, and you'll try. And then over time, you'll actually improve. You'll actually get better. You're there in Proverbs chapter number 9. Look at Proverbs chapter 9. Look at verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 1. It says, Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. Now it's interesting that wisdom is personified as a woman in this chapter. And other places in the book of Proverbs, you know, ladies are probably saying, well, you know, that's no surprise that, you know, that would be the case. But look, notice, notice what wisdom's done. Wisdom has prepared food and drink. Prepared food, specifically it says she's mingled her wine. Do you think that's fermented wine? Do you think wisdom has prepared fermented wine? If you think it's fermented wine, you probably need to spend more time reading Proverbs. You know, Proverbs 20 verse 1, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, whoso is deceived thereby is not wise. I mean, we sang Proverbs 23 before, didn't we? Proverbs 23. What did that sound like? Did that sound like, you know, wine is a good thing? It says no. I mean, look, Proverbs 23, verse number, um, verse number 29. Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine. When it is red, when it giveth its colour in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange woman, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. That sounds pretty wise? No, it doesn't sound wise. It sounds absolutely foolish. You know, it says in Proverbs chapter number 31, it says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You see, wine is something that, that's the opposite of wisdom. Fermented, alcoholic wine. Okay, because I mean, obviously, don't kings need wisdom? Definitely. Because the same book that's saying, look, Kings don't drink wine, and here's wisdom saying, hey, come and drink of the wine. Come and drink. This is going to make you wise. Mm-hmm. Look at verse number three. Verse number three, it says, look, she has sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Wisdom is actually calling out. She's actually calling out. Wisdom is not trying to hide. Mm-hmm. Wisdom is not trying to hide. Wisdom is saying, hello, come here, hello, listen, listen. Mm-hmm. On the highest place, if you're on the highest place, why? It's because you want people to see you. Mm-hmm. 
You know, Jesus said, don't let your, you know, let your light so shine before men. He says, don't, you know, take it and take a candle and put it under a bushel. You know, you put it on a candlestick. You put it up somewhere high so people can see it. Look at verse number four. It says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. She so said, Look, if you're simple, come and get wisdom. Get understanding. It's freely available. It's being it's it's, it's here for the taking. It's being given away. Look at verse number six. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So it's been given away freely, but actually it's actually not completely free. It's not completely free because you've got, you've got to forsake some things if you want it. You actually have to forsake some things. Going in the way of understanding requires that you go, don't go down the wrong path. Look at um, Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 14. Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 14. Proverbs 4, 14 says, Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. You see, you've got to forsake the foolish. There's a way you've got to get away from. Forsake the foolish and live, and go instead in the way of understanding. Look at verse number 7. He that reproveth a scorner getteth himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. You see, there is actually a danger in dispensing wisdom to people who don't want it. There's a danger. You know, we talked this morning about um, Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 6. It says, um, uh, what does it say? It's talking about casting your pearls before swine. I can't remember how the verse starts. Um, da, 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 da. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You see, wisdom is something that, you know, don't give it to people who don't want it because, you know, they're not going to like it. You know, wisdom is something, wisdom is something actually that, that, that doesn't force itself upon you. Wisdom do not, does not force itself upon you. Look at Proverbs chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Proverbs chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Proverbs 2, you, you have to actually desire it. You have to want it. Proverbs 2 verse 1 says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. So notice, Back in Proverbs 9, wisdom was crying out, but here, the person who wants wisdom, they've got to cry out. If thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for her treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. And so here's the thing, we, we understand, to get wisdom, it's kind of one of those things you actually have to seek. Yeah, it's, something, it's something you have to have a heart for. You actually have, have to desire it. I mean, at, when we're at soul winning sometimes, you know, don't try to force people who don't want to hear the truth to listen to it. I mean, you, you'll come across people who they really don't want to hear. Are you interested? And they're like, no. So, okay, you know, I just give them a verse and leave. Mm -hmm. Give them a verse and leave. You know, sow a seed. Because if you, if you, because some people, they, you know, might say I'm not interested, but if you just keep talking, they won't, they're not going to physically shut the door. They're not going to push you off the porch. You know, so give them a verse and move on. Don't don't sort of upset them, because if, if they don't want to listen, it's wasting your time, and it will actually just make them angry. It'll make them it'll make them angry. You know, I mean, obviously there's that balance to weigh through. I mean, Nathaniel and I were given the gospel guide the other day, and at the start, the look on his face, he didn't look like he was particularly interested at the start. He almost looked a bit sort of smart. You know, he had a sort of a, a sort of a smarmy look on his face. He said he was an atheist and stuff, but he said, "Oh, yeah, you can show me." So I did. I went through the gospel with him, and I was watching him, and Nathaniel, he was watching him too, and um, you could see, at the start, he looked quite smarmy, but as we went through, yeah. and he heard God's word, all of a sudden, the expression on his face changed. At times, sometimes it came back to smarmy again, but you saw him swallow it, mm -hmm. you know? And so you don't, you don't know what's actually going on on the inside, and so that's why there is a balance. There is a balance to have there. Sure, if someone's not interested, hey, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if someone's like, yeah, sure, show me. Go through because God's word has power. That's yes. that's how people get saved. Mm -hmm. That's how people get saved. So we believe it's worthwhile putting out there. But it's a judgment call you have to make. It's a judgment call that you have to make. Okay. Um, look back at Proverbs chapter nine, verse number eight. Proverbs chapter nine and verse number eight. It says, "Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee." You see, one of the ways that you can tell the difference between a wise man and a foolish man is how they respond to correction. You see, if you like to be corrected, 
then that's actually a sign that you've got wisdom. If you want people to, look, show me where I'm wrong. I mean, I want people to show me where my doctrine is wrong. Because I'm sure I'm not right. On every doctrine that I've, I've got in the Bible, I'm sure there's doctrines that I'm wrong on. I want people to show me. Yeah. Show me so I can change. Yeah. You know, So I don't have to be wrong. It's great to be corrected because when you get corrected, you're less wrong than you used to be. You know, There's a guy I used to work with that he had the, he had the sign on his door. On the door of his office, he had the sign that said, to be less wrong. Mm. You know, That was a guy who realised he didn't know everything. Yeah. And actually, this was a guy who actually knew a lot. He was, re- he was probably one of the smartest people that was in our workplace. He was very, very smart. But he realised that he didn't know everything. And that was his, that was his motto, to be less wrong. Mm. But you see, if you don't like correction, that's a sign that you are a fool. Yeah. That's, that's a sign. Because isn't, that isn't that what it said back at the start? Fools despise. You know, correction, wisdom and instruction. Fools don't want that. You know, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, we looked at it this morning, for a proof for correction. For correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If you want to be perfected, guess what? You need to be corrected. You need to be corrected. Look at verse number 9. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. You see, the wise man loves instruction because it makes him wiser. He likes to be taught and to increase his learning. You see, learning is a great thing. Learning is a great thing, and if you are wise, then you will seek it out. You will seek out learning. You know, I really enjoyed um, watching the girls have have music lessons on, on Saturday. You know, and look, Take advantage of that. Yeah. Take advantage of that opportunity to learn. You know, to have someone off and go, I'm going to teach you this. Mm-hmm. Take advantage of those opportunities. You know, even though it might be difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you first start trying something, when you haven't done it before, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to play the guitar, it's like, ah, it's sore on the fingers. Mm-hmm. Ow, ow. And it's like, you're squeezing it as hard as you can. It's not hard enough. It's not working. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to, your hands have to get stronger. Your fingers have to get tougher. You know, maybe you're trying to blow, you know, blow on the recorder and it's making funny sounds. Why? Because you're, Fingers aren't pressing down properly on the holes. It takes time to learn those sort of things. But that's the thing. When you fail, because at the start, you know, at the start you're not good at something. You know, when 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 you when you when you get taught something, that's going to reveal the things that you aren't good at. Because that's what the that's what the instructor, that's what the teacher, he's going to be watching, or he or she's going to watch and, and point out, look, you need to adjust this. You need to do this a bit different. That's what, that's what they're actually for. So they're pointing out the areas that you've got wrong so that you can get them more right. So you can actually learn. You can actually improve. When you're taught, it shows those things you aren't good at. It's an opportunity to fail. But of course, failures are the stepping stones to success. You say, well, what do you keep talking about success for? Why is success important? Well, the Bible talks about success. We sometimes sing it, Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And so, how, how do we get success? Well, guess what? God's word corrects us. God's word corrects us. It points out where we are failing. That's what it does. You know, when you see a great piano player, it's easy to think, you know, oh, maybe they're just born that way. You know, it's just like it just, they just, it's just the keys just seem to sing. It's just incredible watching them do that. You know, is that, that, is that, that, is that Bates, some Bates girl or something that you watch? Is it a Bates? Yeah, there's a Bates. Or there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Korean guy that I watch play the piano. It's just incredible. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. And, and you can easily think, you know, that's how they were born. Yeah. But look, how many bad notes do you think that they've played? How many bad notes? I'll tell you how many. They've probably played more bad notes than you've played notes, period, in your life. You know, because that's how, that's how you come. That's how you become good at something, is by actually working, by making mistakes and making mistakes and being corrected, learning. Look at verse number 10. Verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Back in Proverbs 1, it said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, God wants us to have knowledge and understanding. God wants us to learn, but foolish people despise instruction. Foolish people despise instruction. I mean, when we go out and preach the gospel, one of the things we're doing is we're teaching people the gospel. We're teaching people how to be saved. 
But guess what? Foolish people, they don't want to be instructed. They don't want to learn. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You meet somebody who said, yeah, I'm an atheist. And this, and this, and this other woman we talked to, she was, oh, she was crazy. Some of the craziest people I've met are atheists. I think, I think it makes you lose your mind. Yeah. Look at verse number, verse number 11. Verse number 11. It says, For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. You see, there is a great reward to be found in the wisdom that God offers. There is great wisdom that is to be found. Look at, um, keep your finger in Proverbs 9, but look at Psalm 19. Psalm 19, Psalm 19 and verse number 7. Psalm 19 and verse number 7. Psalm 19 and verse number 7. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Look at this. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and light in the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Look at verse number 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them was thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there was great reward. Notice that. There is great reward in keeping God's commandments. You know, learning God's commands. Those are the things that will make you wise, and it's rewarding if you do. Look back at Proverbs. Look at Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs chapter number 3. We sometimes sing this one. Proverbs chapter number 3 and verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, for length of days and long life and peace shall I add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Look down at verse number 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father of the son in whom he delighteth. It's like you're going off the wrong, wrong track. This is the right way that you should be going. Even as a father of the son in whom he delighteth, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honour. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Notice all these blessings that come. All these blessings that come through wisdom. But what happens to the fool? I mean, it's like the opposite of this. You know, length of days in her right hand and her left hand are riches and honor. Well, shortness of days. Shortness of days is in her right hand. And her left hand is, you know, poverty and shame. That's what you'd say. And that's actually true. If you you look through at Proverbs, that's exactly what people get. You know? The Bible says that the way of transgressors is hard. It's not that it's an easy life. You see, you see people who are living contrary to what God says. Their life is not easy. Living a wicked life is not easy. You know, go out and go, get on the turps every night. Is that an easy life? No. It's a miserable life. You know? I mean, they might feel like they're having fun while they're intoxicated. But, you know, anyone who's actually sober and watching them, it's like, you know, it's crazy the things that they do. Anyway, so let's get back to... Um, uh, Proverbs 9, Proverbs 9, verse number 12. Proverbs 9, verse number 12. It says, If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. So notice, whether you choose wisdom or folly, it's going to alter the course of your life, you know? But it's, it's not a one time decision, it's something you've, you've got to choose again and again. You have to continually choose wisdom. You know, and you'll make mistakes, you'll mess up. That's part of the learning process. But notice, it's a very different thing when you turn your back on wisdom. When you turn your back and go down the wrong path. And that's it. Look, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise thyself. You get the benefits if you choose to be wise. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. You know, the Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know, and that's why he's saying, look, choose what's right. Choose what's right. Verse number 14. Whoops, Daisy, verse number 13. Excuse me, I skipped one. Verse number 13. It says, A foolish woman, so we've been looking at wisdom, but now we've got the other side of the coin. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. The foolish woman is simple. She lacks wisdom and understanding. She's someone, she's someone who doesn't want to learn. 
Someone who doesn't want to learn. Does it really matter that she's ignorant? Well, keep on reading. We actually see that it does. She's not, she's not just ignorant, she's wicked. But make no mistake, look, being ignorant is not something that God, God's people should be. God's people should not be stupid. Remember I talked about what it was like at school, where it was like held in high esteem to be stupid? That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to be stupid. We want to be wise. And this, this, this person here, not only is she ignorant, we'll see, she is wicked. Look at verse number 14. For she sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Notice the, the parallel with verses 3 and 4. You know, just as wisdom, wisdom was crying out. Look, it says, um, she has sent forth her maidens, she crieth upon the high places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. That was back what, what wisdom was saying. But verse number, um, you know, call passengers go right on the way. What does it say in verse 16? Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him. So look, that sounds almost identical to wisdom. She's on the high place. She's calling out to the people going past. We need to realise the reason it's so similar is because, look, the devil is deceptive. The devil is deceptive. You know, God's offering wisdom, but the devil, he's got a whole another program, and he is deceptive. Keep your finger in, in Proverbs and look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. People think, oh, well, I'd be able to tell. I can tell. But look, we need to understand the devil is very deceptive. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number, verse number, uh, verse number 13. It says, for such are, look at this, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So these are people who look like the apostles of Christ. And obviously this is back in the day when the apostle Paul was around and there were actually apostles around. Because one of the qualifications for being an apostle was having seen Jesus. Paul said, am not I apostle? Have not I seen Jesus Christ? You know, the apostles were people who had actually seen him. And they, and, and, and they did signs. They did the signs of an apostle. He talks about that as well. He says, look, and no marvel. Why is it that you can have these false apostles? Because no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see, Satan doesn't look, he's not like, you know, dressed in red with horns and a pitchfork and a, you know, tail. It's because people aren't going to fall for that. He says he's transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So we need to understand, Satan is deceitful. Satan is, he's someone who's going to lead people down the wrong path. So beware, beware of who you're listening to. Beware of who you're learning from. Turn back to Proverbs, look at Proverbs chapter number 19. Proverbs chapter number 19 and verse number 27. Proverbs chapter number 19 and verse number 27. Proverbs 19 and verse number 27. It says, Cease, my son, to hear instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. He says, look, if you're getting instruction that's causing you to err from the words of knowledge, stop listening to that. Stop listening to that. Because look, he says, cease. Stop listening to instruction that causes you to go down the wrong path. If you're listening to someone and it's causing you to go down the path, stop listening to them. Look at Proverbs chapter number 22. You see, because the people that you hang around, the people that you listen to, they will influence you. Look at Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse 24. It says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Why? Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Why is it you don't want to hang around with that person? Because if you do, you'll be like him. You know, that's what Proverbs 23. Be not among wine members, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. What? You hang around with drunkards and gluttons, that's what you become. Hang around with an angry person, that's what you become. Look at Proverbs chapter number, uh, sorry, excuse me, Psalm, Psalm 106. Psalm 106 and verse number 35. Psalm 106 and verse number 35. Psalm 136 and verse number 35. Well, look at verse 34. It says, They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Notice that. They were mingled among the heathen and they learned their works. The people that they were around, they taught them. And you go through the history of the Old Testament and see what happened, what the Israelites did. God had told them to cast out these people, to destroy them, who were doing wicked things. They were, they were sacrificing their, their children to idols. You know, They made them go through the fire to Moloch. They did all these wicked, abominable things. And God said, look, you need to stop this completely. But they didn't. And then what happened? The Israelites 
did the same things. Yeah. They, went, they, went, they went to whoring after their gods. Look back at Proverbs chapter number 9, Proverbs chapter number 9, verse number 17, Proverbs chapter number 9, and verse number 17. So look, she says, look, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As from that wanteth understand, she saith him, what's the message? Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. You see, the, this message, this is different than the message that wisdom gives. Wisdom gives a different message. Wisdom says, forsake foolishness and go on the way of understanding. But the wicked imposter in this verse is promoting sin and trying to make it attractive. Yeah. That's what Satan will do. He, that, he will lead you down the wrong path. Don't you turn it, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, talking about Moses, it says that Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because guess what? Sin, there's something enticing about it. There is something that is pleasurable about it. You know? I mean, but, but what do we see in Proverbs 23? Remember, there is something pleasurable about alcohol, but at the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. In other words, it seems attractive at the start, but the end is very, very different. You know? Look at verse number 18. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Does it look pleasant? Didn't finish up that way. The path that she tries to make so attractive is leading to destruction. Look at Proverbs chapter number 7. Proverbs chapter number 7 and verse number 21. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse number 21. It says, with her much fair speech, she caused him to, the, to yield. With the flatter of her lips, she forced him. Notice, once again, yeah. fair speech. Yeah. You know, fair speech. It makes it look attractive. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. No, he, he doesn't know, because he's simple. He's, he's simple. He lacks learning. He lacks understanding. Hearken unto me now, therefore, ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Look at Proverbs chapter number 5. Proverbs chapter number 5. Proverbs chapter number 5, verse number 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Notice, sounds attractive. You know, honeycomb, smooth. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Notice, it's the warning that's been given. But some, some people just don't listen. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honour unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labours be in the house of a stranger. How many people have been seduced by the strange woman and then they're paying maintenance? They're paying maintenance, aren't they? You know, that's what it says. Look, strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labours be in the house of a stranger. Your money's gone and paying somewhere else. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Because who knows what, other, what diseases you'll pick up. Thy flesh and thy body are consumed and say... How have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof? What was the problem? Didn't want to listen. Didn't want to listen to instruction. Didn't want to be told you're wrong. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. Didn't incline your ear. What was that? Stiff-necked. Didn't want to bend down. Didn't want to humble themselves to listen, to learn. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. You see, don't think that being in church will keep you safe if you refuse to listen to instruction. If you refuse to listen to instruction, being in church is not going to keep you safe. Look at Proverbs chapter number 8. Proverbs chapter number 8 and verse number 33. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse number 33. Hear instruction and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my, of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favour of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The title of the sermon tonight is The Importance of Learning. The Importance of Learning. Do you love to learn? Is learning something you, is that something you love? You know, learning new things is actually one of the most rewarding things 
that you can do. You know, God is the one who gives us the ability to learn. Do you know that? God is the one who gives us that ability. It says in Daniel 1.17, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. But the thing is, it might not be comfortable when you first try. When you first try learning new things, it's not going to be necessarily comfortable. You know, the path to success is through the door of repeated failures. You want to succeed? Then you've got to be prepared to fail. Be prepared to fail and fail and fail. Well, why are you going to do that? You actually need a reason why. You actually need a reason why. Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse number 1. Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse number 1. It says, Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. You want to gain wisdom? You need to have a reason why. You know? What is the reason why? Is it, is it just for your own aggrandizement? Or is it for someone else? Is it for someone else that you want to lead them in the right path? You want to lead them in the right way? You know, what, what is the purpose? It says through desire. You need to have that reason why. And also through desire, man, having separated himself. Well, guess what? If you want to get wisdom, you have to separate yourselves from some things. You know, you can't spend all your time sitting looking at the goggle box. You spend all your time just watching TV. That's the path to foolishness. That's the path to foolishness. You've got to separate yourself. You've got to have a desire, and you've got to separate yourself. Um, I mean, if you want to, if you want to think about, it, just think, think of a practical example. If you want to learn to give, the, if you want to learn to give the gospel to someone, the only way to actually do it is to do it. That's the only way. I mean, you, you can practice. And I encourage you, hey, try that. Practice in front of a mirror. Practice giving the gospel to your own reflection in the mirror. You know, practice, you get together with people from church or people in your family. Get together and practice with those people. But the way to really learn it and make it stick is actually to do it. Yeah. It's to actually do it. Look at, look at what Paul says in um, Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number, verse number 9. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 9, Paul says, Those things which you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. He says, look, you've learned these things, you've received them, you've received them from me, you've heard them, you've seen my example. He says, but now, do them. Now, do them. Look at James, James chapter number 1. James chapter number 1 and verse number 22. James chapter number 1 and verse number 22 says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He's, he's, he's look at his face in the mirror. He beholdeth his face in the, in the glass. He says, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see, if you just look in the mirror, see what you look like, and then walk away, you forget. But it says... But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty? Because you see, the way, the, 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 it's not that we're looking in some mirror to see, we're looking in God's word. That's the thing that reveals to us, God's word. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. You see, when you look into God's word and see what it says, and then when you do it, you'll remember you can put it into action, and then this man shall be blessed in his deed. Look at Psalm 110. Psalm 110, and ver- sorry, excuse me, Psalm 111. Psalm 111, and verse number 10, Psalm 111, and verse number 10, says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise and joy forever. Notice that. I mean, it sounds like some of the things we read in Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. You see, don't just be hearers, but also be doers. Turn your foot to uh, last place we'll turn is Psalm 119. Psalm, you're already in Psalms. Look at Psalm 119 and verse number, Psalm 119 verse number 7. Psalm 119 verse number 7 says, I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. God wants us to learn. It's important to learn in all areas of our life especially God's word, but we need to be people who love to learn. Look at verse number 71, Psalm 119, verse number 71. Psalm 70, verse number 71, it says, It is good for me that I've been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding, that I may learn 
thy commandments. The importance of learning. We, we just can't emphasize enough. Learning is so important. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. Jesus is the one that we should learn from. Learn from. Be in this, be in this book. But understand, we can learn from others as well. We can learn from others as well. You see, Jesus is not going to come and teach you how to play the piano or the recorder or the guitar or anything like that. But someone could. You know, Jesus is not going to teach you, I know, chemistry or physics or whatever it is you're studying at Varsity. You can learn from people. You know, some people have this idea, you know, and because it's true, because there are false teachers and people teaching wrong things, there is this sort of tendency to, well, I can't learn from this person, can't learn from this person. But no, you can learn from people. You know, even some foolish atheist may know some particular area of expertise. You can learn from them. In fact, everyone know something that you don't know. You can learn from all sorts of people. And learning is a it's a great thing. God wants us to learn. You know, you can you can I mean you know my wife was reading this book about these nuns, you know? You can learn stuff from them. Now, are they going to teach you the way of salvation and, and how to live a, a godly Christian life? No, they're not. But you can learn. From what happened to them in their experience. There are interesting things that you can learn. But the most important thing that we need to learn is God's word. Yeah. It's God's word. You know, the Bible says, um, and in fact, in Psalm 100, I've turned away from it, but in Psalm 119, it says, Oh, how love I thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Yeah. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I've refrained my feet from every other way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed for thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Who's taught? Yeah. The psalmist? God has. Thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray you'd help each one of us to love to learn. Help us to love to learn. Help us to love acquiring wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You know, James writes, he says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing, nothing wavering. You know, for he that wavereth like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let us not be double-minded. Let us not be unstable, but let us have faith and believe. You've said, look, if we ask you for wisdom, you'll give it to us. Please give us your wisdom. As we open your word, Lord, as we open your word, and you know, in this month of March, reading through the Bible, Lord, open thou mine eyes, that we might behold wondrous things out of our Lord. Teach us. Give us wisdom. Help us to depart from the way of foolishness. And go in the way of understanding. We thank you and praise you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.